The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds whether big, small, established or startup impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the themikewidenershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and for 25 podcast platforms. Check the Mike Widener Show at the on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a terrific gentleman from New York City who's a mental health um, and LGBTQ advocate who just released a memoir called How I Lost My Mind and Found Myself. He also works for a not-for-profit organization, helps people with disabilities. He's also a writer for Splash Magazine, and he's also got some projects as well, too. And he's the first Jordanian to come out in Yonkers, New York, and urges everyone to treat everyone equal, which is not different. And, of course, he's got a great story to tell. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studio somewhere in New York City, ladies and gentlemen, writer, advocate, and author, the very terrific David Rabadi. David, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, thank you for having me. How are you, Mike? Hey, I'm doing great. I hope you're doing wonderful in uh, New York City, and um, you'll hope things are well for you. So <laughs> we think about you guys a lot, too, during this situation. Uh, well, things are going pretty well. The weather's nice, and that's always a plus, right? Usually <laughs> the weather has its own kind of, uh, uh, what sort I'm looking for, like it's a it's a surprise what we get with weather. Sometimes spring comes too early or it comes too late, and and then fall. We're in the fall season now, so it's it's been pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And and of course, people tr- try to control the weather. You'd have a much more serious mess than a tornado or a disaster. So <laughs> <laughs> you got to think about that. And so your your mental health and uh, LGBTQ advocate in New York City. You're also a writer for Splash Magazine. You got some great articles. You also work for a not-for-profit organization helping people with disabilities. And you also have a book called How I Lost My Mind and Found Myself. And also the first Jordanian to come out and also er- encouraging everyone to treat equal and everything else. And before we get into all that, including a book, tell us how you first got started. Um, well, I first got started when I first started writing. I actually started writing poetry in high school. And then I never thought to become a writer and, and 
college, I studied theater and mass communication. So I always wanted to be an actor, but I never thought that I would embark on a writing career. So when I was about 27, I got the opportunity to write for Splash Worldwide. And the editor wanted me to go to like Fashion Week or to different events around the city and write about the events. And I thought that was boring. I didn't want to write about events. I would rather want to do Q&As. So when I got to Fashion Week, I remember seeing Nigel Barker, the photographer from America's Next Top Model. Mm -hmm. So I said, hey, Nigel, do you mind if we do a Q&A for Splash World Live? And he's like, sure, I don't mind. So I did the interview without getting permission to know <laughs> if I could just do an, a Q&A um, instead of writing about the event. So I spoke to the editor and I said, you know, listen, I really like the whole concept of like meeting people and interviewing them. So I'd rather do that for the magazine than just write about an event. And I was lucky enough that he was okay and he gave me that shot. And then um, years went by. I did it on and off because um, I, like, I never thought I would ever write my own memoir as well. So it's like I did it on and off. I really wanted to be in a creative outlet and I didn't realize that writing is a creative outlet. Like it's, it's something that I don't mean to, you know, pat myself on the shoulder, but it's something that I'm told I'm good at. And, um, I started to feel like maybe this is something I should take more seriously. So I started, um, realizing that, okay, the more people I interview, the more credits I'll have to my name. And then I started thinking of like my life and about being Middle Eastern and gay and how I came out and having bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. And I thought that this is an interesting story and it needs to be told. And, you know, I'm Middle Eastern, so it's very taboo in the Middle Eastern culture for people to identify as LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. And you know, sadly, in the Middle East, people are often jailed or killed if they identify as LGBTQ. And I was lucky enough that I lived in America. I mean, it was a debacle of epic proportion when I came out. Uh, you know, I came out in the middle of a psychotic episode. So when I came out to my family, three days later, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I went back and forth with wanting to write this memoir because I would have to really talk about intimate details of my life. And... I don't know if my family is so comfortable with that because they're already, um, my siblings were accepting, but my parents were having an issue with it because they're old school immigrants from Jordan mm -hmm. and they don't really get, they don't, they feel like they're being viewed as bad parents that didn't know how to raise a child because I identify as LGBTQ. And I'm like, that's not true. It had nothing to do with your parenting and it's all about, being born this way so I've had like deep discussions with them and you know, my mom has come to terms and has said you convinced me I accept you but you know I can't go against what your dad says and my dad is like if you ever marry a man I want nothing to do with you and I'm like well I want nothing to do with you now <laughs> but that's not <laughs> the case we're in each other's lives and I just understand it's something that you know he's not very comfortable with and I respect that Mm -hmm. And I'm, like, I'm fortunate enough, like, a lot of people, I know when I was younger, a lot of people, which made me be very fearful about coming out is, I had a lot of sad stories of people that came out and being kicked out of their homes and ostracized. And I felt like, wow, like, what would happen to me? And that left me in fear for a long time. I was 30 when I came out, so it was a long time coming. But... um I'm, I'm happy I did it, and now I go around sharing my story, and it's about equality and not to view people with mental illness any differently or people that are LGBTQ. Um, it's not a disease. It's, it's You're born this way. It's how you identify. Mm -hmm. And what was that one precise moment that influenced you into writing the memoir? So what was that one precise moment that says, this is, this is I'm going to write about it? You know what it was is when I had my psychotic episode, I walked on to the Cross County Parkway in Westchester. And I was walking on the parkway to make a statement for gay Arabs. So I got stopped by police officers, and then they were like, you can't just walk on the highway. I said, well, I'm walking. 
and they like manhandled me, put put me in handcuffs, put me in the back seat of the car, and drove me to a, a, the psych ward. Mm-hmm. And I was on Channel 12 News. And when I got out of the hospital and when the chemical imbalance balanced out of my head, I realized what a mockery I made of myself. Like, it was just, like, so embarrassing. Like, I was on the news and it's saying, deranged man walking the parkway. So I felt like all these rumors started happening. Like, people were like, oh, he had a boyfriend and he left him and he's trying to kill himself. And I'm like, that's so far from the truth. And I was never trying to kill myself. I was trying to be an example and make a statement and fight for gay Arabs to be able to be true to themselves and not have to live in fear. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I needed to write this because I wanted to share the truth. All these people were going around, like there's a big Arab community in Yonkers, and they were just having a a whole song and dance with what happened to me. And sadly, a lot of people, um, I guess, got off by me suffering in such a way. Mm -hmm. Like they just, it it was sad. But some people reached out and, you know, were concerned and were like, we hope you're okay. And, you know, we understand and we stand by you. And that was very nice to know that some people stood by me and were supportive of me being Middle Eastern and gay and also having bipolar disorder. Um, So I wanted to get my story out there and I wanted the truth to be out. And that was what motivated me to write the memoir. And and what age were you first uh, detected with uh, bipolar disorder? You know, I never knew I had bipolar disorder until I was 30 after my psychotic episode. I lived my whole life with different shifts in energy. Like weeks I had like a lot of energy and weeks I had low energy. But I was never like depressed where I was like, I just never felt depressed before. I was always more like in mania, like always excited and happy in the life of the party. And I thought everyone felt this way. I didn't know it was a mood disorder that I had. And what worsened my condition is the doctor that gave, I went to a doctor, I wanted to lose 10 pounds. So the doctor's like, here's Adderall. He gives me Adderall, and I don't know that Adderall is a, is a psych medicine for people with ADHD. I thought it was just an appetite depressant. So I didn't look at the side effects. I'm just taking it, and I'm like taking it a couple of days, and I'm on and off, and you're not supposed to really do that with Adderall. And then I would have a drink sometimes when I would go to the bar, and that would make me feel like he, like Superman. I'm like, why am I feeling like Superman? Like, what's going on? I didn't realize, like, the medicine I was taking with the alcohol was causing this. So it started to worsen my condition. And then it brought on a full-flown episode, a psychotic episode. And then, so when I came out to my family in the middle of my psychotic episode, three days later at the hospital, they diagnosed me with bipolar disorder. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And, and also... um. I, w- I was going to ask you as well, too, that um, you- you're talking about um, with, with uh, being the Arab community and Yonkers and um, also being LGBTQ and everything else. What percentage of um, a- Arabs and Yonkers are um, are of LGBTQ, like in uh, New York, America or, um, say, out in the Middle East um, or, or, I, I'm or not, Jordan? I'm not the exact percentage, but I do know a lot of people that have confided in me and told me that they're LGBTQ, but they're too scared to come out because of the stigma and because of being disowned and disappointing their family. So sadly, a lot of people, especially the ones in Yonkers, I know six people, and they're all living in disguise. Like, they don't ever plan to come out because they have too much fear. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, you know, so what... Someone needs to be an example. Someone has to see somebody come out and live their life and be productive and being a part of society, and they need to see that. And I felt like I would take that on because I felt ready for the challenge. And I don't, I don't want to live. It's very sad to live a life that's the truth. Mm-hmm. And I was left with a choice, live to be myself or die as someone else. And I chose to live to be myself.
Mm-hmm. And, and, and how and how do uh, how do you encourage people to um, to be accepting coming out? And what are some methods? What are some ways? And what you say? And what are what are some of the things you say and do and um, encourage um, you know everyone in LGBTQ to be authentic, accepting, and everything else? It's what you're looking for. Well, so I since I talk about being LGBTQ and also having mental illness, I speak for NAMI, the National Alliance for Mental Health. So I go around to different universities and organizations and hospitals, and I share my story with mental health and being Middle Eastern and gay. And I share my story to shed light on people that don't have to feel alone and know that there are other people out there that have gone through what they're going through and they don't need to feel shame. And I, and like, for example, I have bipolar disorder, right? And that there's a big stigma and people feel very shameful and that they have to take medicine. And I tell them, a diabetic has a, has a sugar disorder, like their sugar is up or low, and they take insulin to stabilize it and balance it out. They're not ashamed for, you know, having this illness and taking medication for it. So why should we feel ashamed for taking medicine for a no-fault illness? It's not like we did something, we, it's, it's something we're born with. We didn't do something to, you know, get this bipolar disorder it's just in our dna and i tell them that there's a life that's out there and that you can be productive i've i've had three different psychotic episodes within 11 years wow and they all happened without me taking my medication that i'm supposed to be on so i learned the hard way i can't live a productive life without medication and i didn't want to feel shameful for taking medication i didn't want to feel shame about trying to get a job at an employer and hiding because people would tell me no one needs to know you're bipolar it's not anyone's business don't let your job know don't let this person know and that would anger me because i would be like why 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 do i have to hide that it's a, it's something i deal with and i would rather like if somebody faints at work because they're diabetic their sugar went up or went down too low wouldn't it be beneficial that they tell their job that they're diabetic so they know what to do just in case they're in that scenario. So I think that if I'm in like a depressed episode or if I'm in mania, I think it's something for the people I work with to catch on and to know that, okay, maybe he needs to go see someone or see his doctor um, or call his family. You, you get what I mean? Like, I think we need to be more open about it and not feel that shame. Mm-hmm. And with um, with being um, a part of the LGBT community, I tell people that there's no fear in living your truth. And when you live your truth, you find happiness. A lot of people on this search for happiness, you know, like everyone thinks I'll get a nice car that makes me happy. And that's not true. They're like, I have this perfect career that makes me happy. And then they're still not satisfied. And then they're like, oh, I met the love of my life. But then it turns sour because they're they're looking for outside components to make them happy rather than going from what's within. Mm-hmm. And it was I believe it was Robert. Is it Robert? Uh, he's a big um, motivational speaker. Tim Roberts or Robert? I can't remember his name, but he said a he said a. Uh, he gave a bit of advice and he said the one thing that will make you happy other than anything else that you think like the car the house the this the that is helping other people helping other people will bring joy into your life and that rang true because i feel like when i go around especially with like the college students and they want to speak to me privately because they're not comfortable to share in a room with other people, things that they're experiencing. And it brings joy to me to help people. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like that's such a wonderful thing that I want other people to know that their their truth is their truth and they should be who they are and they're meant to shine. Mm-hmm. And, and do you, you know? think, and do you think your book, how I lost my mind and found myself is actually bringing more and more people out um, right away? Is it, it, it feels coming like, you know, everybody's jumping out or is it, like a slow process where one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. And um, how do you think the book is going to come like, you know, very quick or is it just like a really slow process? 
I think it's it's probably a little bit of both. I've had people that I had no idea, like there are people that on my social media that I knew from childhood but haven't heard from them in years that were like writing me and telling me, I got your book, I read the story, it was so amazing, and they can't believe I went through this, and they're so happy for me, and I gave them inspiration and, and encouragement. And I was like, wow, that's really, like, like I had to take a step back because that's like, it's amazing to know that I wrote something in hopes to make a change, and it's actually happening. Mm-hmm. Like people are confiding in me and telling me that, you know, they couldn't put the book down, and um, they they want to now, some people have said that they felt about, especially with the, the mental illness, they felt like they could relate to some of the stuff that I wrote about and want to go get and, and meet with a doctor to get an examination and, and see what it is that they're going through. Because it's, I believe it's one, one out of every five Americans have a mental illness. And people with mental illness are 10 times more likely to be a victim. Mm -hmm. And the media has such a way of portraying people with mental illness as like, I guess, violent. And that's far from the truth. Like I'm not a violent person. I have bipolar disorder and it's just a mood disorder that makes you either happy or depressed. And even in my manic state and even in my depressed state, I was never violent with anyone. Mm-hmm. So it's a misconception, and everyone's different, and that's the thing. Like you, you, two people could have the same illness, but but have different characteristics of how they are, and and the way they deal and the way they cope. Mm-hmm. And I know that, like, um, I give some tips in regards to like um, depression. So I feel like you know, there are times I have depression, and sometimes it's so hard to get out of bed. It's like a fight. But then I know that I need to change my surroundings because I can't change my mood, but I can change my action. So I will call like a friend that's really funny and talk to him on the phone. And I find myself laughing at his funny stories. Or I'll watch a rerun of Will and Grace and Karen Walker's my favorite um, TV character. And she makes me laugh so hard that I find myself being lifted from my depression. So it's like little things like that or like going to the gym or calling a friend and just, you know, going to walk around the track, like doing something, physically changing your environment and rather, rather than stay in bed and will on your sorrow because that just makes things worse. So you, you have to, like, you have to fight for it. You can't just expect happiness and, and all this joy to just happen for no reason you have to make it happen mm-hmm. and do you think social media is uh bringing more people out in the open or is it um making it more restrict restrictive I, I think it's making more people be out in the open but it's also it's kind of scary because a lot of people feel they can just say whatever they want and have no kind of regard towards other people's feelings or they can they think they can just dismiss anyone that's expressing themselves and I think what anyone really wants in this world is to express themselves the way they see fit without the ignorance of other people's judgment. Mm-hmm. And, and, of course, we'll talk more about the book as well, too, along with some of the other projects. And what's the best way um, David is helping others? We'll find out in just a minute. But first, listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be here on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, over 25 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Wagner Show at the end. Any mobile device, subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel and follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with mental health advocate and LGBTQ advocate, along with being a writer for Splash Magazine and the author of How They Lost My Mind and Found Myself, David Ravity, here on the Mike Wagner Show. David, not only you're an advocate and a writer and author, you also work for a not-for-profit for 
people with disabilities, and you're also helping them out in a great way. And uh, tell us all about that. So I work for an organization called Westchester Disabled on the Move. I'm a healthcare navigator, so I help enroll people into health insurance through the Affordable Care Act. Um, I've been doing it for about four years, and it brings a lot of joy into my life to help people in need and that struggle or that don't know what services that are out there for them. Um, and it's um, it's kind of scary now because, uh, the, you know, with especially the election coming up, like we don't know if Obamacare is still going to be um, something that people can get or if they're going to change it to something else. So it's like up in the air right now and it's a bit scary. Um, but, you know, we're, we're going to keep going until we find out otherwise. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, you know, there's other opportunities, too, that, um, you know, not just giving them health care, but you're also giving them encouragement as well, too, that um, I, I I guess with just um, all kinds of disabilities. And um, what are some of the ways uh, you also help out others, you know, besides going to the well, hospital, speaking a, and everything? There's, um, there's um, when I go to, around to the different um, hospitals and um like the universities, like I always talk about um, what my journey has been and how giving back really is something that brings me a lot of joy. And I help at the Russia Stable on the Move. When we uh, have consumers, we also let them know about like SNAP benefits, heat benefits, cash benefits. Um, so there's also other components that we um, can help them with. And it's also an independent living center. So they don't promise housing, but they help look for housing and help find out, find vouchers for it. Mm-hmm. And any plans on um, taking your case to a federal level and uh, make it, um, you, you, you know, give it more attention, more notice, or, you know, say like, um, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word or the expression, like say with put to the forefront and making like, more awareness, more funding, and everything. Any plans on taking um, with your situation to a to a federal level? Um, you know what? I'm I put the book out there, and I um, I'm going around doing uh, marketing for it. And I have wherever it takes me, it takes me. But um, I have to um, just see where the opportunities lie, and then take it from there. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, and how about the book? Um, you, you know, is that being marketed in, um, Jordan as well too, in the Middle East? And, um, and, if, and if so, what well, feedback the are you getting? The publisher said first we'll publish in the United States and see how it does and then decide if we're going to publish because they have a publishing house in, uh, Dubai. So it would probably be the first book that's published about, uh, about people that are LGBTQ. Um, because you know, in the Middle East, it's it's like against mm-hmm. it's against the law there. So they they're not like they don't really promote it. But interestingly enough, I went to visit Jordan four years ago for my brother's wedding, mm-hmm. and my sister in law, my brother's wife, her brothers, I think, could tell or caught on that I was gay. So they took me to an underground gay bar. So when we walked in, it was a bookstore. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. And then you walk upstairs, and then up the stairs is a bar. And they're like, David, the guy here likes guys. And he has this place for people that are like him. And I was so nervous. I still couldn't tell them because I'm in the Middle East, and I'm nervous. I'm like, people get jailed here for it. Like, I wasn't going to say anything. (laughs) But it was interesting that that happens like the, even though it's against the law they still find a way to support each other and be around each other because of this guy wow um, yeah it was amazing it, it, so then and the funny thing is is my brother was like please don't tell my wife today until we come back to new york because <laughs> that her in jordan and he thought like you know how old like we thought jordanian people were like oh my god gay is the devil and so we, when she came back to New York, when she came to New York, I was like, listen, I'm gay. She's like, okay. So I was like, really? She's like, you can live your life. She goes, I found my man. You got to find yours. 
<laughs> it was so funny. She was just like she was. We were so taken back at how open minded she was. That is amazing. And of course, it all came from a bookstore and a bar at the same time. And too bad they didn't serve coffee over there, too. I, I think you just mixed coffee together. I think you would have had a hit in Jordan. My goodness. <laughs> I, I think that's a great one for you. You know, start a bookstore, start a bar, have a little coffee shop, and you can um, just help people. In, in, yeah. in New York as well. I think that's a great idea. And, and we'll talk about you, we'll talk about your upcoming plans as well, too. First, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the com, powered by Sound of Web Studios. Visit online at com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sound of Web Studios is the answer. Sound of Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention Mike Wagner's show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, along with Amazon, Audible, and more. Take the Mike Wagner show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner show on the YouTube channel and follow the Mike Wagner show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with, um, author and writer and mental health and LGBTQ advocate David Robity here on the Mike Wagner Show. David, um, just a few more things. We'd love to have you back on in 2021 and beyond. What can we expect from you in 2021 and beyond? Well, I'm actually working on a pilot now. I'm writing a pilot for a TV show called Gay in the City. Oh. And it's, it's just, it's, it's very um, new, and I'm starting it... Um, it's either going to be a reality show or a scripted show, but I'm writing the whole theme and the, the synopsis and all that. I'm hoping that that's something that will progress into turn into an actual show, but that's what I'm working on now. There's a producer that I met with um, that thought it was very interesting. Like, I think like there's no, there's no real like shows except it was Will and Grace for years, and that was a great show. But there's no, like, um, something showing, like, gay men and the city. You know what I mean? Like, how, what life is really like and what they're doing. And um, so they, it was going to take place in the city, and it's going to be based around two characters that are 20 years apart in age, but they're friends. And one is a seasoned gay guy sort of speak who's around the block and knows the scene and one is very new and is learning and discovering about himself mm, amazing so that's what I planned. Uh, uh, ama- amazing and let us know when that's going to come out we'd love to have you talk about that and uh, who do you consider biggest influence in your career david who's the biggest influence in my career correct um this is going to sound funny because it's she actually just has her memoir out now Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey, think, really? A vision of love. Yeah. And she's like, ah! <laughs> yeah, Mariah. Well, it's like, I, she's always talked about, and her, a lot of her songs have always been about feeling displaced and like you don't belong and trying to find your way. And that's always resonated with me ever since, like, her first album. I've always been a fan and, like, a lot of her lyrics have helped me get through so many things in my life. And um, it's so funny that me and her both have a memoir that are out. Mine was came out on the 31st of August, and hers came out on the 29th of May, uh, September. Oh, wow. But it's funny, and she also has bipolar disorder. Really? I, I, did, yeah. read, I did read something about that, and I've... Read about some episodes, which I'm not going to discuss, obviously, but um, but but yeah, but yeah, it's like you know, I was reading about in the uh, papers and internet and whatever else. I went, oh my gosh, no wonder, you know, some of the um, you know, haven't seen songs and whatever else, and um, of course, yeah. we'll we'll talk about that off the air as well too. And that was just amazing as well, Jen. If you two got guys got together, you mean you could just um, really make something happen too? I could see that happening. That's something I, I dream for. Mm-hmm. I, I actually was an extra, and I talk about it in the book, in her movie, Glitter, and I got to meet her. 
and I was like, I was like, so stunned to be standing right next to her, and I didn't know what to say. So they were like, "We need air up here," and they're like blowing this cold air from the bottom first floor level onto the second floor level on a balcony because it was a club scene. Mm-hmm. And she's standing right next to me, just taking through the air. And I'm like, air for Mariah. And I'm like, I'm such an idiot. Why did I say that? <laughs> we need air. We need air <laughs> for my hair. Come on now. <laughs> and then I was like, wow, you're so beautiful. And she was like, thank you. I said, I just want you to know your music has really helped me get through some moments that were difficult for me in my life. And she was, thank you. And she was, I'm glad my music helped you. You're a handsome guy. You'll be fine. So... I think at least, you know, I had some kind of dialogue with her, mm-hmm. um, but she's, she's a big fan. I'm a big fan of her. Mm, that is amazing. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? I think the best advice I can give to everyone is living your truth will bring you so much inner happiness and doing things that matter and not be kind of, um, sh- don't, get lost in the in the things that are sugar-coated. Like, get and, and embody yourself with the truth and who you are and what you are and what you have to offer rather than thinking you need to be... Like, a lot of people feel like, I need to be a doctor or I need to be a lawyer or I need to be an A-list actor to feel validated, and that's so not true. And I meet a lot of people that are always on this quest of finding ways to validate themselves when they just simply need to accept themselves mm-hmm. and that's who a, they are. And that's a very good point. Once again, author, writer, and mental health and LGBTQ advocate, David Robity of the book, How I Lost My Mind and Found Myself on the Mike Wagner Show. And a very big thank you for your time, David. You've been absolutely fantastic, very encouraging. Looking forward to having him again soon. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, where can people uh, purchase or check out your book? So my website is www.david, D-A-V-I-D, Rabadi, R-A, B for boy, A for apple, D for David, I for ice, dot com. And there are links there to Amazon and Barnes and & Noble where you can get a copy of my book. That is fantastic. Once again, David, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back on in 2020 on One Beyond. And keep in touch and um, maybe have a little coffee in a bookstore or something. Oh, thank you so much. This has been great. I really enjoyed your company. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers who are well-focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress, and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds, whether big, small, established, or startup, impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites. We give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.